Well, James Blake still has a two sets to one advantage here, but Gonzalez has uh, that intangible called momentum in his side. Hello, everyone. I'm Leif Shiris <laughs> alongside Barry McKay and uh, excitement, uh, as there always seems to be in a Davis Cup match, as uh, Blake just one line call away from being at double match point, and instead they're in a fourth set. This has an eerie feeling, Leif. It kind of reminds me of La Jolla. And here is the point we were referring to. Blake watches this ball. Now watch as Gonzalez hits it, but he gets the bad call, but it was reversed. And so instead of being 40-15 and double match point for Blake, the score is 30 all. I mean, I've never seen a reversal quite that crucial on a big point leap. That was unbelievable. Here is set point in the tie break. And Gonzalez from the brink of disaster as Gildemeister, his coach, looks on. Unbelievable. Well, one of the most remarkable things about it was that it seemed to me that the reversal in the call came very late. And yeah. Blake, I think, was already turning to get the balls from the ball boy to serve for match point. And Leith, how often have we seen a coach captain get up and argue the call and get his way? Yeah. I mean, that was amazing. It Gildemeister was, did a great job. He really did. He stood behind his man yep. and he turned things his way. Bad break for James Blake. So, more tennis to be played here at the Mission Hills Country Club in Rancho Mirage, California. The opening match of this Davis Cup tie. Blake, two sets to one for the good. Well, now we'll see if James can get it back together again. A very frustrating end of that third set. Oh, yes. And Gonzalez coming to life with that brilliant forehand. Well, let's hope that Blake doesn't forget that he earned the advantage, Barry, by attacking the backhand. Exactly. And you can see what will happen when you come into this man's forehand. It's a nice time for a first serve. When you're behind in the score, get that first serve in. out there watching this on the edge of his chair or maybe the edge of a of a bed <laughs> in the hospital who knows but Patrick hang in there my friend it keeps on going here now remember as a match wears on a return of server will adjust to the serves coming at him and Gonzalez yep. has done that nicely on the Blake serve I mean he is hitting some beauties off that backhand wing for both players, obviously, but he's trying to get that first ball in. Oh, yes. And you talk about taking a big chance leap on a huge point. Yes. Yeah. Having said that, though, he was in such good position. You know, you feel like because of the ease with which he delivered the shot, maybe he was ready to make it. You know, and, and Blake always needs to strike that balance between aggressive and consistent play, and he's done it pretty well today. A couple of uh, miscues in the third set, but otherwise he's playing well. James did not like the toss. Quite please. So James Blake does a nice job of uh, avoiding jail, the break point, and holds on to his serve here in the fourth set. Some numbers from the third set. Gonzalez, Gonzalez has done a nice job of reducing his unforced errors. And he was able to get that break back when it counted. He hit a couple of aces at the right time, too. Not a lot of aces, but Gonzalez timed them perfectly. I don't think Blake is serving as well as he was. You can see that first serve percentage perhaps just a little low. 
But there's so much to ask of a tennis player under this kind of pressure. And I think Blake has played well enough. He should be in the locker room perhaps with a straight set victory, but he's going to have to go back to work here. But I tell you, he's ready to do it. This is a different James Blake from a year yep. ago. Gonzalez is a crafty veteran, seven career titles. He started playing Davis Cup at 17, so he has an amazing amount of international experience. I mean, he is a seasoned campaigner. Thank you. So you have to be sharp to take him out. This time he takes a, a page out of Blake's book. Tax the American into the backhand. And his net percentage going up. He's been up there 24 times, Gonzalez has, and won 17 of those points. No, that's going to go wide. Back in. He rolled over that one. Been slicing that ball, but this time he comes over. Watch him line this ball up now. It takes plenty of time. Nice follow through just inside that sideline. backhand leap. He could have hit the net on that ball. Right. If uh, you touch the net in the middle of the point, you lose it. Now watch Gonzalez. He's all over this shot, but look how close he comes. And he backs up just at the last moment. Now he'll just touch this ball. And that is really a tight <laughs> shot. I mean, he was like a half a foot from that net. He's uh, walking a tightrope there, wasn't he? Oh, man. Did you mention Leaf? If any part of your body hits the net, you lose that point. So a hold of serve for Gonzalez. One game all, they'll uh, change tennis balls. James Blake serving with new ones. New balls on a grass court, I think a big factor. That ball oh. gets very heavy. Send me to heaven. I used yeah. to love new tennis balls because it could really cut through the court. Oh. Smart shot on a grass court. Blake saw Gonzalez moving to his left, hits behind him. Gonzalez could not stop. Now that has really been one of his best shots when Blake has yep. been at the net today. He's lobbed very effectively. Blake conserving energy now, sees the lob go up and just says, too good. 
Not going to chase that one down. So Blake is able to hold serve. He holds a two sets to one lead. He also holds a two games to one lead. The beautiful Santa Rosa Mountains surrounding this fine valley. Come along on the Bonjour Tour, the road to the French Open. Seven grueling clay court tourneys will test the world's best on the way to Paris. The first stop, the men's clay court championships next Saturday, then the Masters Series in Monte Carlo on Monday the 16th. That's only on the Tennis Channel. Gonzalez serving at 1-2 here in the fourth set. Now this is the first time these two have played on a grass court and the first time these two have played a three out of five set match. Now we talked about new tennis balls. This is only the second game with those balls and these are like brand new balls. Big chance for an ace from Gonzalez and he does. No, we can't convert on the overhead there. Nice play by Blake. You saw Gonzalez with his nose over the net. Gonzalez comes in very quickly. James very smartly throws up that topspin lob. saw some of the chalk come up on that service line. When he sees a second ball drop short, he'll go for it. Just missing. Let. Now starting to serve much better. Two against two. Mixing it up. Well, interesting to note uh, over the last few weeks uh, the discussions from Ivan Lubacic, the Croatian star who led his nation to the Davis Cup. You know, he said, you know, playing some of the top guys, I know that I've won a Davis Cup, something that Roger Federer hasn't done. And he feels that's an element of confidence that can really help carry him as a player. You look at guys like James Blake and Andy Roddick, they're looking for that edge to begin chipping away at what Roger Federer has established yeah. in the world stage. And I think a Davis Cup victory will be just the medicine American tennis needs. Because if you remember, the been something of a drought. The last title, 1995, when Pete Sampras was a Moscow. part of that great victory in, yeah. in Moscow over this Russian side there. They were in the finals a couple years back against Spain. Oh, Gonzalez just leans into a beautiful cross court backhand. This is, you want to learn how to hit a backhand cross court, this is it right there. Tremendous follow through. Look at the form the balance and again well is Blake becoming a little too predictable on that yeah. second serve it just seems like Gonzalez is. is seeing the ball and anticipating it. yeah it's dropping short Blake has used that tactic effectively as well, taking that backhand return up the line. Oh. No. 
Lake going for a big second serve. The sixth double and now a big chance for Gonzalez here. Thank you, Quiet Leeds. Quiet Leeds. Something of a chance there, changing the line of attack. Yeah, yes. What control on that backhand leap. That was a beauty. Yeah, and Blake did well. He kept the ball down very low. I think Blake is saying that the lines person may have made a call, but uh, Pascal Maria is not having any of it. Let's take another look. Here's the backhand up the line. Yep, inside. Oh, yeah. So, another break point chance. And boy, Gonzalez. Would look dangerous if he can get this one. Quiet these. And Gonzalez has a break. Now the backhand that had been so Chilean. doubtful in the opening sets is scoring big for the Chilean. Here is that last break point as James Blake trying to fight off Gonzalez, but Barry Gonzalez is starting to find the range. Well, and his backhand has just come to life, Leaf. I mean, he hit three absolutely perfect backhands in that last game. And he's moving in on the ball. His confidence has suddenly returned. Here. Well, confidence and momentum can move across the net like a tennis ball. First one man has it, then the other has it. It's definitely in Gonzalez's corner. And you can see he is really flowing with confidence. Swinging freely and building the lead. This is such an eerie feeling, Leaf, when we think back to that first match in La Jolla, Davis Cup, when Roddick had match point to put the U.S. up 1-0 and ended up losing the match. Yeah, that was something, wasn't it? Andre Pavel coming from nowhere yeah. just as Gonzalez is making a move here today. Pablo ending up uh, winning it in five sets. I mean, that was something. And this is the other tough part about Davis Cup. You've got Roddick and Masu in the locker room probably watching this match and not knowing exactly what's going to happen, when they're going to play. Oh, Gonzalez again. A winner cross court off that forehand. Well, Gonzalez is making a brilliant move here, up 4-2. But regardless of the result of this match, we know for sure that coming up next, Andy Roddick will take on Nicholas Massu in the second match today. Can't blame him for going for it. That backhand has worked so well in the last three games. <laughs> Nicely done. You know, Barry, I was speaking with some of the uh, Chilean press contingent and they are here in big numbers to uh, report back to their nation on how they do here and they said uh, when Gonzalez and Masu won their nation's first gold medal at the Olympics it said it took them 108 years to do it of course after the doubles Masu won the singles yep. and uh, they said well it took 24 hours for us to win our second gold medal <laughs> <laughs> that's great and I'm told there were 10,000 people in the square in Santiago 
to welcome those two guys back after the U.S. Open. They weren't able to get back to Chile until after last year's U.S. Open, but what a homecoming. Well, Gonzalez conserving a little energy here, and uh, Blake will be happy to take that love service game. So more tennis from Rancho Mirage, California, here in the Davis Cup. Welcome back to the Davis Cup, presented by BNP Paribas World Group Quarterfinal. James Blake kicking it off against Fernando Gonzalez, and Blake has a two sets to one advantage, although Gonzalez has a 4-3 lead here in the fourth set. So the Thank Chilean you. pressing to even this match at two sets all. Some big matches around the world in Davis Cup as the Russians now are 2-0 up against France over in France. Of course, the winner of this match plays the winner of that match. Should it be Russia, it will be in Russia. That's a great effort. No. Most of the American side was thinking, boy, if France could win that no. and we could win this, it might be another home match. If they do happen to win and play Russia, it would be away. You hate to look uh, too far down the road. So much tennis to be played on this uh, wonderful weekend here in Rancho Mirage. We'll have all of it for you live on OLN. And remember, we'll have a rebroadcast of all the tennis in all three days, starting at 8 o'clock Eastern on the Tennis Channel. But we are excited to have you back with us on OLN and the Tennis Channel for uh, our continuing coverage of the U.S. Davis Cup push here in 2006. Of course, this tie, a chance for them to reach the semifinals. This is just the opening match. So plenty more excitement to come, and uh, it's going to get interesting here as Gonzalez has suddenly become the player we know he can be. Gonzalez in with a 126 mile per hour bomb right down the center. And another one. Gonzalez out wide, 127 miles per hour. He's got a handful of aces to go along with the uh, handful of games he has here in the fourth set, 5-3. And he's become a handful for James Blake. Suddenly this guy's uh, got the belief that he can make a comeback and win. Thank you, White Bates. Just for a moment, I thought James might let that ball go. It hit the top of his racket. An unplayable lob. Interesting play by Gonzalez today. He's taken the ball right up the middle, and it's worked. Well, Blake has a tendency to anticipate shots, and you saw him there moving to his left, and he got caught. your serve to lose a set. Always make your opponent yeah. serve it out. This is a big momentum type game because Blake does not want to lose, as you said, Leaf, and have his opponent start the next set. Well, Blake may have gotten away with one there. Fairly tame approach into the forehand. Yeah, that was not that tough a shot. Especially for a Gonzalez forehand. And it's 
good. Blake to get to four or five. of the match and, and his worst double of the match that thing was about 10 feet Thank over you. the service line. No that's better. And what I like about James Blake these days you know when he's sort of picked up his game is that he doesn't allow mistakes to really rattle it. He stays focused he stays relaxed and stays intense. of the Gonzalez game that's really helped turn the match around. That's been his return game, don't you feel, Barry? Yeah, and, and also the, the improved backhand. I mean, his backhand is so much better now than it was in the first set. Well, you gave him the broadcaster jinx again, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> don't talk about my game, all right? <laughs> Not that there's much there. But. So here's another chance for Blake. for the third time. Some shot that oh. Gonzalez. Well, he hits a drop shot lead from about five feet behind the baseline, and it works. Now watch where he's playing right there. The angle, the underspin. Thank you. That ball Thank virtually you. stopped on the far side. Blake in with a big serve when he needs it. So both these captains are on the edge of their seats, both leaning forward with intensity. No. As Gonzalez looks over at it, Captain Gildemeister knew that he had hit the wrong shot. Is that little shot off the backhand? No way. Yeah. So Blake wins a long service game, and now it's Gonzalez to serve for the fourth set when we come back. Now this Davis Cup World Group quarterfinal is heating up just fine. Thank you. Fernando Gonzalez serving at 5-4 in the fourth set. James Blake trying to stay alive in this set. He was so close to closing this match out in three sets. But somehow Gonzalez uh, has remained standing. And uh, again, he has picked up his serve beautifully as well as his return. And yeah. only three points lost this set. That says something. All right, take a look at the winners, how Gonzalez has turned this around. Well, well this is the biggest game of the match for thank you, Fernando nice. Gonzalez, no question about it. Chance to even this match as he checks that sun from the far side. And Gonzalez 
and Leaf continues to take big chances on that second serve. And it's working for him. Well, you know, he's similar to Blake in some ways, that he needs to take chances at the right times. And when he gets the mix right, he can also be effective. Gonzalez has plenty of chances to even this match up at two sets all. And you can say that Blake is no doubt discouraged. Quite please, thank you. Here is triple set point. There it is. And Gonzalez does win it. And uh, well, we've got uh, an opportunity to catch up with the current Davis Cup captain, Patrick McEnroe, we've got him on the phone from New York as uh, this match now dead even at two sets all. Patrick, are you there with us? I'm here, Leaf. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, just before we get into the match, I want to wish you the best. Uh, your lovely wife, Melissa, I know. And uh, how are things going on that end? Everything okay? Yeah, we're, we're, we're just on hold here. She's um, she just went out to take a little walk because she said I'm making her too nervous. So, uh, <laughs> but now that it's two sets all, I think she, she understands why. Well, I, can, I can understand that, Patrick. Uh, tell me this. If you were to sit with uh, James Blake right now, what would you tell him at the start of this fifth set? Well, I think he needs to pick his energy up a little bit. I think, obviously, Gonzalez got, got the momentum going at the end of that third set. And... Uh, I just feel like James has gotten just a little bit flat here in this fourth, and uh, you know I think if he can just get some you know get some energy going, be a little aggressive, that's when he plays his best. I think a key for James has been uh, I think his serve has dropped off a little bit in the last couple of sets. You know when he gets that first serve in, it just seems like the rest of his game is there. So look, it's one set now. Uh, I think both guys are a little bit fatigued. You know it's it's tough transition to come on the grass and play. You know quick points, a lot of quick movement and now a long match and uh, you know I think it James has just got to be aggressive and, and try to get off to a good start here. I, I'm sure you were following the match in the third set Patrick it was two sets to love and uh, James was serving for the match 30-15 he he had an unfortunate overrule on this sideline call. On the second serve going a lot to Gonzalez's backhand and uh, I, I maybe you know mentioned to him now to you know serve a little bit mix it up to the forehand a little bit more in this fifth set. Patrick, yeah. we hope we'll be able to keep in touch with you uh, throughout the rest of this match. Well, you guys know I'll be watching. <laughs> well, well, Patrick, we appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and I certainly wish Melissa her best, uh, our best uh, here from uh, Rancho Mirage. We're sorry you're not here with us. We certainly understand what's going on in New York. If I don't pick up the phone, that means I'm on my way to the hospital. Okay? <laughs> okay. Take care, guys. All right, Patrick, thank you so much. Well, hopefully we'll be perhaps checking with Patrick later and... Uh, Here's James Blake, a fifth set to decide this opening match. Thank well, you. Davis Cup play never dull. Leaf, this is an incredible match. Looked like it was going to be over in three, and here we are in the fifth. Fifty-nine. Yeah. Wow. That is very interesting. James with an 0 and 6 record in five setters. There will be no tie break here in the deciding set of Davis Cup play. Similar to Wimbledon. Oh, a little casual on the baseline there. Interested to hear Patrick say that maybe James has just gotten a little bit flat, run out of maybe some energy at this point in the match. Remember, it's warm. It's just over 70 degrees here. That sun is insistent. It's good. <laughs> just bearing down. And although there is a cool breeze, remember, this is a very dry, arid environment. So it's tough to play out here for such a long period of time. That's the good play by Blake. He opened up the court nicely. You know, as a player, Leaf, too, when you lose a huge lead like James has done in this match, 
it's hard not to think about it when you're sitting working on a fifth set. You're saying, well, why am I out here? I should have been in the locker room an hour and a half ago. Well, you know, Boris Becker always said that it wasn't so much about forehands and backhands in this fifth set as it was a test of character. And character will come to the forefront here in this final oh, set. Yes. And that uh, was a character test that James Blake passed. New votes, please. So while these guys change side, let's uh, let's listen to what Andy Roddick had to say about uh, Fernando Gonzalez, about how tough he is mentally. Gonzalez hits the ball a ton. I mean, he's he, he's capable of coming out and just uh, tearing anybody down and wiping them off the court. And the thing about both their both their guys, they they just compete so well, you know. And especially for their country, as evidenced by the Olympics, I, I had a first row seat, uh, you know, to watch it. And uh, they they really get up for playing for their country. Boy, isn't that the truth? Gold medal in singles from Nicholas Massu and in doubles from Massu and Gonzalez. So when they have Chile on the back of their shirt, yep. they are different players. So true. Well, the excitement doesn't end with this match. We've got more coming up for you. Andy Roddick will take on Nicholas Massu. That is the second match of our opening day's coverage of this quarterfinal Davis Cup tie. Yeah. It up. Yes. And just from the body language, Barry, yeah. I feel like Gonzalez just seems to have a little more Ladies about him. Ladies and gentlemen, this cover is wrong. It's going to be fixed. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You can see nearing the three-hour mark. Match time. Oh, and there is one of Blake's best returns, and he needs it at this stage. Steps into that backhand. Watch Blake move forward on this return. Short backswing, just blocks it, takes the speed. Well, Gonzalez is known as a power player, but that, sir, was more about location, wasn't yep. it, and spin. And a half a dozen aces today. Most of them coming in the second half of the match. Points from Gonzalez up 40 15. Yes. Classic grass court serve. You don't hit it yeah. flat. You hit it with just enough slice so that the spin stays low and skids in. Oh! With great anticipation by Blake on that second serve because Gonzalez continues to take chances down the center. Well, he is cranking it up 128 miles per hour. Just seems like Gonzalez has gotten stronger as the match has gone on. He was exhibiting some soreness and some achy play, and I just think he's played through that, and now he's found another reserve of energy. No. 
Yes. Gonzalez dishes up his sixth double of the match. This is a lot about yes. Gonzalez's experience and also a lot about his success on grass. We mentioned the fact that he was quarterfinalist at Wimbledon, lost to Roger Federer in a very strong match. He was the first Chilean, as a matter of fact, since Ricardo Acuna in 1985. And the irony in that is that Ricardo Acuna has been with the USTA player development program for a long time. So yeah. Wimbledon quarterfinalist at Chilean Acuna helping American juniors. So. <laughs> Nice touch. Well, he's had uh, one win in his career coming from two sets down. That was uh, last year against uh, Jose Acasuso. Down on the rebound ace in Australia. Well, he's uh, a fairly dangerous spot here is Blake. Thank nice you. To break point. Look out. Wow. Well, Blake did well. Yeah. He made Gonzalez play a difficult smash. Yes. Yes, he did leap on a big point. Even though this overhead looks easy, it's the kind that you could blow in a hurry. Blake was right on that return. Just did way too much with it. <laughs> the sounds from center court getting a little stronger. A lot stronger. It sounds like a torture chamber. Some screams from both men there. Too good. Yeah, big time tennis from Gonzalez. And Blake again played a strong game, but Gonzalez just too good. I mean, this is a good backhand right here. Nice counter. And Gonzalez way off that singles court has to go for the winner. He does and loves it. It's a long service game, and now we stand at two sets all and one game all. I'll tell you, the Chileans making as much noise as the Yanks at this point. Oh, come on, Fernando. A roundhouse forehand off the return. Watch the swing now from Gonzalez on this forehand. Tremendous torque. Whips it cross court. Gonzalez so dangerous is oftentimes the more trouble you put him in, the more he goes for these outrageous shots yeah. and converts. Ooh. And 
something happened to the grip. It looked like it slipped on that second serve from Blake. The racket almost flew out of his hand. Eight double faults. Oh. Called out on the baseline. 15 14. And Maria, umpire Maria, confirming it. Well, things have gone from bad to worse now for Blake. And here's another look at it. Let's see if this curls in or does it miss. Looked long. Very close. Second serve. And that second serve from Blake was another very close call. 30-14. Down the center. Quite these. <laughs> we talk about three big points from 1540 down. The he serves brilliantly to have an end. is one of his best recoveries yet, and he needed it. James Blake, 2-1 up in the fifth set. Davis Cup presented by BNP Paribas, World Group Quarterfinals, and this is a doozy. James Blake in the fifth set against Fernando Gonzalez were even on serve, and how has the match turned? Take a look at this. The first two sets, it was all James Blake, and since then, Gonzalez has been lighting it up. 41 winners over the last set, two sets in three games. Take your seat, please, behind the players. Thank you. Well, every game, vital. Gonzalez wisely taking his time as he steps up to the line to serve here in the fourth game. It's been a while since Gonzalez has made a mistake like that. He's been so good out of the blocks. And especially off that backhand side. And I think James right now is just saying to himself, I want to keep the ball in play. Maybe this guy will keep going for big ones. He'll get it. Oh, he was right there. Tried to ease that ball up the line. It's started in a hurry here. Gets to the ball easily, but tries to ease it up that line. The net's higher, six inches on that sideline. of the racket for Gonzalez, and he gets to 30-15. Yeah. Well, in spite of Gonzalez's improved play on the backhand wing, I still think that's an effective play for Blake. Yeah. Here's a big chance for Blake. Second serve, 30 all. That's good. Oh, no. And James knew the minute he hit that ball, it was going to go wide. Although, Lee, that was a tough shot. There wasn't much else he could do as we have another look here. James on the full run now. You could see Gonzalez covering that ball up the line. 
Wants to just slash it cross court. Kind of a rare two-handed half volley from Gonzalez. Yeah, Blake had done a nice job with the counter. So Blake down 30-40 here. Yes, well, that time he really yes. anticipated the return into the yep. forehand. So back to Deuce. Remember, Gonzalez had five deuces in his last service game. So Blake has been applying some pressure. We've had break points in almost every game this set except one. on his feet after every point. Yes. Seven doubles for Gonzalez. Passing shot of the day. Here's the little slice. Now Gonzalez sees his opportunity. It's a decent approach shot, but look at the backhand down the line. And one of the few times today, or at least in the last couple sets, where Blake has responded aggressively. Yeah. And great energy there. And that's something that Patrick Backer was looking for. Oh, second Blake serve is. to work with. Big opportunity right here for Blake. In. And Blake has the break of serve in the fifth set. You could see that one coming, Lee. The second serve from Gonzalez drops short. James all over it. Well, he really showed his skills in the last couple points of that game. First on the backhand pass, and then on the forehand. Thank you. He's earned a 3-1 advantage. serve early. Oh. Now that was a good aggressive serve by Blake. Stretch Gonzalez out on the forehand wing. And you have to play through the tension, play through the nerves to find a serve like that. And the forehand scoring for Blake there. And now a couple chances to get to 4-1. 
Thank you. Blake standing up well to the pressure from Gonzalez. James Blake, 4-1 in the fifth set. James Blake taking on a Fernando Gonzalez, 2-1 in the fifth set. And this is from Deuce. And watch what Blake is able to produce. Backhand winner, one of the best of the match. And he backs it up with some power off the forehand. And the break is secured. So here is James Blake now playing with a 4-1 lead. And uh, boy, a couple of shots can really turn a tight match around. On the full run, and those two points about as crucial as you can get in a fifth set. But James played them just perfectly. And that backhand leaf that he hit on the full run, I think maybe one of the backhands we've seen all season long from yeah, James Blake. That was comparable to Richard Gasquet hitting a backhand winner against Roger Federer at uh, Monte Carlo <laughs> when uh, Federer lost to the young French star. That's how good it was. It was uh, that kind of shot. And, well, you talk about a moment. I mean, yep. that was a moment that uh, perhaps cemented the belief that has uh, been sort of in and out of James Blake's heads today that he should win this match. Well, a little, little more drama now in this fifth set. As, <laughs> as, uh, well, Dean Goldfein assumes all sorts of roles yeah. as, as captain, and here he's... Uh, Just walking along with his man. Now, Patrick, if you're still watching out there in New York, here's something... Uh, we want to see you do every once in a while. Carry that umbrella like uh, Dean's doing. Uh, I, I think what James Blake is doing, he's trying to keep moving. He doesn't want uh, exactly. any stiffness to settle into those legs. These guys have covered some miles out here on this tennis court. Beautiful grass tennis court at the Mission Hills Country Club. And coming up after this, Andy Roddick will take on Nicholas Massu. So uh, it doesn't stop with this opening match. We'll have more great tennis from this Davis Cup quarterfinal. And interesting to note, Masu leads that head-to-head. -head. Two matches to love. They played on a yep. hard court and on a clay court. But this will be their first encounter on grass, and you have to feel that the, the advantage leans toward Roddick in that encounter. But as Gonzalez has shown, Barry, when these uh, Chileans play with uh, their nation's name on the back of their jersey, they're different players. They really they are, feed on that energy, don't they? They are unbelievable. I was at Athens for the, uh, the gold medal matches last summer, a summer ago, Leaf, and uh, uh, I would have said that Masu had no chance to beat Marty Fish early in that match. It was quite amazing. I mean, he he looked like he had cramps. He looked like he was never going to be able to play five sets, but somehow Masu wins the gold. Yeah. Right. And then 24 hours later comes back and wins the doubles gold with Gonzalez. So two remarkable young men. And we'll see them on Saturday, in fact, uh, in the doubles. They'll take on Bob and Mike Bryan, the world's number one doubles team. A couple of uh, twin brothers out of uh, Camarillo. Let's go down to Kirsten Gum. Kirsten? Yeah, we have two different players on the sidelines during that timeout. You saw James Blake pacing around with the umbrella over his head, trying to stay loose. On the other hand, Fernando Gonzalez uh, having cramps in both of his legs, got a, run a rub down from the trainer. Back on court, ready to play. All right, thank, thank you, you Kirsten. Uh, yeah, interesting to see how these players react physically to boy, this toll. This running has taken here today. Well, now all of a sudden, what goes through Blake's mind, Leaf? In other words, he saw the massage, he saw the problems that 
Gonzalez is having, does he try and run him around? Does he change his strategy a little bit right now? I don't think so. I think he just keeps playing his game and uh, take what comes his way. I mean, this would be a great chance if he could break again. Exactly the kind of point I was alluding to. You know, he just stayed relaxed, stayed in the rally, didn't go for too much, and finally earned the error. having any trouble with the legs on that for him. Double coming is eighth of the match as that ball fell very short on the toss. Well, and perhaps the legs telling there in the serve. So much of a good serve about the legs. That's where all that energy up into the ball is generated. So Blake in with a chance here. 30 all. Change up again from Gonzalez. Oh, and you can see it, Leaf. That serve starting to get very shaky. The first serve. Real low. Yep. I'm not surprised they've played almost three and a half hours of tennis here this afternoon. Able to dig deep. 126 miles per hour. Gonzalez survives that challenge. So James Blake will serve at 4-2. So James Blake looking to do something he has never done before. A couple of things. He's never won a five-set match. And he has uh, never won an opening singles rubber and playing for the U.S. Can he do it here today? He's got a 4-2 lead. Ace number eight for Blake to start the game. Boy, he would love a quick game here on his serve. There's that tremendous angle off the forehand. Of Gonzalez, boy, he uses that shot so well. You give Gonzalez a ball well inside the baseline, and you're looking for big trouble. Yeah, he has amazing acceleration of the racket head. Well, taking a page from James Blake's book. This is what Blake likes to do go for the returns. This time it's Gonzalez striking with the forehand. Boy, this is a huge point for Gonzalez. 
get right back in this set. That's a miss hit. Oh. Incredible. Leaf, he absolutely mishit that backhand. You could hear it from up here. And he gets away with it. Yeah, look at that. And it actually forced Blake out of position and opened up some space down the line. Gonzalez just seems to have nine lives today. Thank you. And Gonzalez faked like he was coming in. El Gonzalez has the break back, and we are even on serve in the fifth set. Welcome back to the Davis Cup, presented by BNP Paribas. This is World Group quarterfinal action, the opening match. James Blake taking on Fernando Gonzalez of Chile. And we are in the fifth set. We are even on serve. We've traded breaks, and this has developed into a real happening. What looked like a relatively yep. easy victory for James Blake has become a five set epic. Who would have thought Lee three hours and 38 minutes ago especially at the end of that second set that we'd be sitting here with this kind of drama in front of us in a five setter. Now Blake uh, sits ahead in the score at 4-3. Well, he lost the break Thank advantage. You. He still is ahead in the score. Gonzalez trying to get even. Just to remind you that this three out of five set match, there is no tiebreaker in the final set. So they will play to advantage. So this one uh, has the makings of one that could go deep. Oh, that's a big second serve. Gonzalez sneaks in behind it, knocks off the volley. That's and it. you know, Leaf, we, we've set almost perfect conditions thus far, and it's still awfully good, but a little bit of wind now starting to be a factor. And we've seen about three or four miss hits in the last couple of games. So I have a feeling the conditions are getting a little more difficult on that center court. Gonzalez would love a quick game here to even things up. Yeah. There it is. Ace number eight for Fernando Gonzalez. Well, how about this scoreline? Two sets all, four games all in the final set. Well, Patrick McEnroe, you better go out and have a a run around Manhattan just for a couple of minutes here. Relax a little more. That's right. Davis Cup <laughs> captain Patrick McEnroe is home in New York. On the bench, Dean Goldfine, assistant captain this Thank week, you. and he is uh, Please. helping with all the duties that a captain would normally have. There's Dean Goldfine, a man who has plenty of experience, Coach Andy Roddick, Todd Martin. No, that's long. You know, he also spent some time coaching Grant Connell and Pat Galbraith. Of course, Galbraith, uh, the Davis Cupper as well. Doubles. Oh, and a great effort as Blake sneaks in behind that serve. But what a backhand passing shot. Here comes James. Doesn't do that much with the forehand volley. 15 over. Gonzalez on the full run. Watch the follow through on this shot. And that was uh, a great replay, wasn't it, of just how strong Gonzalez is as he pulled that ball back cross court. And you have to. You know, Pat Blake on the back. He continues to come in. It's the right play. And it takes him to 30-15.
let for service. wide just wide Gonzalez keeps that back in so well controlled down the line there you see Blake lunging for the forehand volley but doesn't make it like he was coming in behind the shot retreated and then hits one of his best forehands of the day well normally he plays this inside out doesn't he but this time he played it inside Thank in you. Quiet, and Blake could only watch Quiet, please. Yes. nice save by Blake Gonzalez waiting for some kind of a call maybe it was he thought it was a, a net cord That shot. Blake hits a solid forehand, and Gonzalez hits maybe the best forehand he's hit all day. Yeah, and it says two things. It says a lot about Gonzalez's character. It also says how strong he is to pull that back cross court. Yep. Break point against Blake again. It's Blake who pulls the trigger on the forehand. And now it's the American fans who have something to cheer about. Yes. And again, plenty of clearance over that yeah. net. So there was Thank some you. safety inherent in the play. It stays in. Well, I'm not sure Blake could have walked around the net and dropped the ball any more accurately than he played this backhand. Watch this ball come right into the corner. Absolutely perfect. And now it's Blake with a chance to get to 5-4. Thank you, Dwight Lees. Big first serve. And James Blake has done it, and the American fans are out of their seats. What a moment. Blake up 5-4 in the fifth set. Well, welcome back to one of the best Davis Cup matches of this year, or any year for that matter. James Blake trying to win this opening match for the U.S. But meeting stern resistance from this man, Fernando Gonzalez, in what looked like an easy win for James Blake, has now turned into a five-set epic battle. And it's Blake with a 5-4 lead. Gonzalez, no safety net here, serving at 4-5. Thank, Thank you. And there have been times in this match where, where either man has played well, but I think we're coming to a point now where both men are beginning to play their best tennis. And that's what great champions do under the most pressure. They find their best tennis. One hundred twenty-one miles per hour down the center. 
under. There are no tie breaks in final sets of Davis Cup play. Gonzalez cranks it up again, 129 miles per hour. Well, That's number nine. We've talked about James Blake's poise. You have to admire the poise from the Chilean. I mean, he's under enormous pressure here, playing in the United States, and he's delivering a game like this. Well, a very strong game from Gonzalez. And boy, that's a great name if you're a tennis player, Gonzalez. It is indeed. <laughs> I, I think often of our old friend Pancho Gonzalez, one of the greatest of all times, Leaf. In fact, there's a wonderful statue right here on the grounds at Mission Hills of the great Richard Pancho Gonzalez. Yeah, one of the all time greats. And, well, we've got one of the all time great matches <laughs> going uh, on here in this. Davis Cup tie. I mean, what can you say? These two men have left it all out here on this court. Five games all. And Blake misses a sitter. Holds up new balls once again. Blake takes his time on the backhand, eases it up the line. Two sets all, five games all, 30 all. The second serve, it offered up a nice attempt by Thank Gonzalez, you, and he took it. So here is a break point for the Chilean. And the forehand finds the tape, and Gonzalez has put himself ahead 5 6 now. In the final set, and Gonzalez will serve for the match. An amazing match, Leaf. Uh, honestly, reminds me of that final when Masood looked like he was out of the match against Marty Fish over in Athens about a year and a half ago, and somehow managed to win that match. And today, Gonzalez down two sets to love, really one point away except for that one bad call from a match point and here we are with Gonzalez serving for the match quite amazing. Yeah and, and again we've talked so much about this today is how different Mesu and Gonzalez are when they represent their nation. They find a, a deeper reservoir of, of energy and skill and yeah. belief. Suddenly they play bigger than they are as just individual players but when they represent their nation something they, they are something altogether yeah. different. Speaking of a close match lead. Just got word from our statistical experts, but Gonzalez has won 184 points, Blake 182. Does it get any closer than that? Yeah, remarkable After stuff. After almost four hours. Well, we're nearing the four hour mark, three hours and 46 minutes. Let's not count James Blake out. Nope. He has uh, gotten up off the mat in the past, but he will need to come up with something special here as it's Fernando Gonzalez, the 25 year old, originally out of Santiago. Now serving for the match and to put Chile ahead one love in this opening match in the World Group quarterfinal. Let's see uh, what Thank Gonzalez you. has Quiet, got. Please. Quiet, please. Thank you. Oh, and there's another off the top of the frame. A huge swing by Gonzalez into the 10th row of the far stand. Oh, 
That's a good approach. Blake keeping it under control. How about that? Now dead even at 184 that points all. No, he missed no. that wide. Gonzalez going for it again. Well, now Blake up by one point. Well, this is why you never, ever capitulate. You hang you, tough, please. and Gonzalez has offered up some chances now for Blake. Broken back at love. Six that is amazing. Four very quick points for the American. Six games all, no tiebreakers in the final set in Davis Cup. So this match continues. Thank you. Well, both Take men now have Wait, failed. Please. And serving to close out the match. Thank you. I think we've jumped down the rabbit hole, Barry. <laughs> Good news for Blake. The backhand error from Gonzalez. 15 out. First save on that overhead was the key. Gonzalez had Blake stretching right here. There's the shot that saved it. And then another fairly easy overhead angled off. Drop shot way too high. Now that's not the play for James no. Blake. 30-15. Gave Gonzalez a lot of time to get in behind it. That's the shot. Blake is a lot more comfortable bossing people around with the forehand. 40-15. So here is a point to move ahead. 7-6. Second surveys. So Blake in the fifth set leads 7 6. Well, you talk about a marathon. This opening match in this Davis Cup tie is a marathon, and both these men are marathon men. Gonzalez getting some treatment from the Chilean trainer. His legs have been a point of concern, yep. as this is the third time now that he's uh, gotten massage treatment. James Blake sitting comfortably in the shade on his side of the court. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Leaf, that the legs so important when you're serving. And we saw Gonzalez struggling on his serve just two games ago. And we'll see if these legs can hold up now. And there's something about grass court tennis, Leaf, that people think, well, it's soft, it's nice, it's not as tough as a hard court. But in some ways, it's even tougher because you have to push off a lot harder. Yeah, the strain isn't necessarily in your knees, but it's it's 
in your bottom and in your legs as you try and get down to all the balls. Now, Dean Goldfein is having an extended discussion here with Pascal Maria, the chair umpire, about this massage. He's saying, is Gonzalez allowed to have this? Wow. Gildermeister pacing on the side as well, the Chilean captain. Now that is Doug Spreen that Dean Goldfein is talking to, and Doug Spreen is a former ATP trainer, now traveling with Andy Roddick, and he's well-versed in the rules about what trainers can do in a changeover like this. Now this discussion continues then between uh, the assistant captain, Dean Goldfein and the umpire, and uh, perhaps uh, we can get an idea of what's transpiring down there. I mean, you talk about drama, Leaf. I mean, this We're match now to... almost four years, four um, hours old, I should say. Well, let's go down courtside now to Kirsten Gum, and she may have a report for us. Kirsten, what's going on down there? At Leaf Barry, Dean Goldfine is really upset and is talking to the umpire. He is saying that they're taking an illegal medical timeout. They already had a medical timeout for Fernando Gonzalez's legs, and now they're working on his legs again. He was disputing with the umpire. We'll find out exactly what's happening right now. Okay, thank you. And you can see Gonzalez. Uh, has shown signs of wear and tear in those legs. He's done a lot of running to somehow haul himself back from a two set to love deficit. And remember, Blake served for the match in the third set. So uh, this has been a long road back. So the miles are starting to accumulate in those legs. Let's see what he has left uh, as he'll serve now at six, seven. And you can see uh, in Salazar, I was going to say he's rolled up those shorts, but now he's let them go again. Gonzalez in trying to close points out quickly. And watching that point, you really feel that that was a desperate play by Gonzalez. Yeah. So almost a bluff on the approach shot, but able to dig up the volley. Well, he's coming in a bit more in this final set. He's been in 10 times, won 9 out of 10 points. Again, Gonzalez drawing on every last ounce in reserve to get up for that first serve. that people are whistling just when he's ready to make his toss. It'd be like somebody screaming on a backswing at the Masters on tee number one. 30-15. Oh, that's a huge forehand. I thought for sure Leaf he'd go down the line. Blake had already started cross court. Gonzalez with such confidence in his forehand, just belts it.
Masters of Tennis in this match. And Blake hauls himself back to deuce. Now Gonzalez looking up at somebody here. I want him to be quiet. He definitely is unhappy with some people directly below where we're sitting. Gilman leading his case to umpire Maria. Well, here we are at Deuce. Quiet, please. Thank you. For a moment, Leaf, he could be in trouble. But what a reflex volley old. by Gonzalez. Gonzalez decides to come in, gets caught right here. But watch this reflex. Great backhand volley into the open court. Quick hands. Thank you. And maybe please. the biggest point of the match. Yeah, and, and not from a player who's known as a guy comfortable around the net. But you can see how effective he can be. Seven games all. Serve into the body from Blake. Remember back to the U.S. Open last year, Blake held a two set to love lead against Andre Agassi. Their fifth set was decided by a tie break. Yeah. Agassi winning it. Of course, here in Davis Cup, no tie breaks. Since Gonzalez struggling a little bit now with his footwork and his motion. If he looks just a little stiff yeah. on those legs. I think you're right. And uh, I think Blake was trying to play to Thank that, by playing that drop shot yeah. instead of coming to the net himself. Gonzalez backing up, somehow gets power into that backhand passing shot. Here's the deep shot. And look at Gonzalez, well behind the baseline, nails a fantastic backhand. Great follow through. What right. a combination oh. of passing shots. Oh. First the backhand. And now the forehand. Again, Gonzalez. Miraculous shot off that forehand. Now watch him here. He gets caught behind the baseline, but just enough Thank spin to bring it in. Oh. 
No. Oh. Yes. I'm sure that was uh, accepted with some relief mm. by Dean Goldfine. He's got plenty of energy in his legs as he uh, jumped out of that chair pretty quickly when Blake won the point. Deuce. Out. Ooh, called out. Oh, look out. We're really going to have some controversy now. Oh, man. I'm surprised that the umpire got involved here. I mean, this is not a good overrule. Wow. Paulo Pereira is the official referee who sits behind the umpire. Meister really upset. Well, you can understand his frustration. I mean, a very close call on the baseline. We'll perhaps get a second look at it, and uh, we'll see here. Thank talking you. to the umpire, Pascual Maria. I mean, that's inside the line. Oh, boy. The linesman called the ball good. Fire Maria overruling. Game point for Blake. Well, Blake unable to take advantage. And now saying, hey, if we'd gotten the point, that would be a break. Well, perhaps it's tit for tat. Remember, James Blake had 30-15. He had a call overruled on the sideline that would have given him two match points. Exactly. Well, they say that things even out with line calls, and I, I think most players will say, no, they don't. But perhaps in this case, it has. So here is a point for Blake now to get to 8-7. Yeah. So Blake, marshalling all his resources here, finds a way to 8-7. Well, what a sensational match here we have between James Blake and Fernando Gonzalez. 8-7, Blake leads in the fifth set. And this has been one of the greats, one of the all-time Davis Cup matches. It didn't start out that way. It looked like no. a relatively easy victory for Blake, but yeah. it has been anything but that. Well, Fernando Gonzalez has showed his usual grit. Oh, it's been unbelievable, you, Leaf, in that ladies. last overrule. Or it was the capper. We'll see if Gonzalez can hang in. And he starts with another race. His 10th of the match. Yeah, and that's uh, a very experienced start. Win that first point on your serve when there's so much pressure on you. No. A moment ago, his 10th double to follow. Thank you. Oh. Well, Gonzalez is so good, isn't he, off that forehand? We've seen it today. And it really is his signature play, the forehand. You know, once you see him wind up on the forehand leap, you almost say to yourself, the point's over. And there was a good example. I thought he was coming down the line. He waits for Blake to make his move. Hits the great inside-out shot. He is so confident on that forehand side. Gonzalez rolls the backhand when he has to. 
I think it's a reasonably good approach shot here, maybe just a bit short. Gives Gonzalez that extra time. Watch the beautiful follow through. Thank you, quiet please. Now he continues to produce under pressure. He's always serving to stay in the match. Yeah, yeah serve out wide. So eight games eight all. Games. And this match continues. Well, just to remind you, Andy Roddick and Nicholas Massu are up next following this match tomorrow. We'll have the doubles for you. Bob and Mike Ryan taking on Fernando Gonzalez and Nicholas Massu. And on please. Sunday, the reverse singles. Cross court. It's good. Love 15. Of course, that doubles match with Bob and Mike Ryan, 4 o'clock Eastern on OLN. We'll have all of this weekend's tennis live on OLN, and then all of it will be rebroadcast on the Tennis Channel starting at 8 o'clock in the evening. Oh! Gonzalez. Eastern time. Excuse me, Bear. Sure, no problem, but Gonzalez just hit his 31st forehand winner of this match. This could be another one. And there's 32. The inside out. 32 forehand winners from the Chilean. Well, the legend that is this Chilean star Thank continues you. to grow. And in his nation, boy, his, uh, his history will be written large for the things he's done. Imagine what's going on in the coffee shops and bars of Santiago as we speak. A live coverage from right here. What is a nice point for Blake to 15, win. 15. Strong play by Blake. And he stepped up nicely into the court. And he could find the easy forehand winner. So eight games all, 30 all. No. no. A little slice. Not an easy shot for Blake. And he comes under it a little too firm. Well, you can see the chances that Gonzalez has had today. 22, converting five. Let's see how he handles this one. Oh. Gonzalez yes. wishing that had not been a fault. No. And a double. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's that one could be expensive. Gonzalez has the break now at nine games to eight. Uh, helped along by the double fault from Blake, but he'll have to shake off the disappointment there, Barry. Remember, Gonzalez served for the match at 6-5. Yeah. Well, the Chilean audience has again come to life. Sounds like a soccer game as Gonzalez now has a big opportunity. I thought James rushed that second serve slightly on that last serve leap. I saw him come back to the baseline, thought he would plant himself. Dished it up pretty quickly. Yeah, these, uh, these are moments of tremendous stress, and uh, the crowd all on their feet makes it even more difficult to play in these conditions. Well, coming up next, Andy Roddick and Nicholas Massu. They've been waiting in the locker room a long time as this match, uh, over four hours now, just nearing the four and a quarter hour mark. Massu has a two match advantage in their head to head, although this is the first meeting on a grass tennis court. 202 points for each player. Does it get any closer? You have to wonder how tough it is for both Roddick and Masu. They were probably planning on playing Leaf maybe an hour and a half, two hours ago. Yeah, this, uh, we talked about how at the start, Barry, that this was a battle of two heavyweights on a tennis court. Well, maybe this is something more of a marathon now that we get into it. 
as uh, this match uh, has had so many amazing twists and turns. And Blake now facing potentially losing this match as Gonzalez will step up and serve for it at 9-8. Can the American find a way back? Oh, what a start. Ace number 11. Three points away. The little moments, the opportunities, the half chances that come to James Blake in a match. 15 all. You just feel like he has to win this point. Mm. Gonzalez coughed up the unforced air. Big serve. Ace number 12 goes right under the racket of Blake. Serve three big serves on that deuce court. So after four hours and 18 minutes, we have a match point for Gonzalez. Point saved. And not an easy shot for Blake. That ball stayed very low. James comes in, handles it well. Just over the baseline. Can you believe it? A second serve ace, number 13 out wide. Oh. So for the second time, Gonzalez, a match point. What a remarkable comeback for Fernando Gonzalez. The 25 year old out of Santiago is able to haul himself back from a two set to love deficit, and he takes out James Blake in the opening match. Chilean 
flag. And it over. Well, there have been some great moments in Davis Cup tennis, Lee, but we're witnessing one of them right here. Well, if you're a Chilean Davis Cup fan, that was uh, one of the greatest moments as uh, Gonzalez continues to create remarkable moments. How he was able to come back from the deficit he faced today against James Blake. You just have to give the man credit. And James Blake, what an effort to nearly find a way through in that fifth set. But Gonzalez, perhaps just one shot better. 10-8 in the fifth set. A heroic effort, but Blake falls just short, and it's Chile, one, the U.S., nil. Ace number 14 finishes it off. Gonzalez, a tremendous five-setter. So James Blake unable to get it done as Fernando Gonzalez is the hero of the opening match. Back with more from Rancho Mirage in a moment.